the importance of discernment. This is a really interesting topic. Again, feel free to take notes. If you want to take notes, um, I'll send you all the, the, the file. I have it on, as a Word document. If you all want it, right? Um, so again, uh, so what, what is discernment, you might ask? Uh, discernment is the ability to interpret what is true from what is false, right? Uh, without discernment, you are walking blind. You will be able to hear, you will be able to hear God but not acknowledge that it's him speaking. Remember, if you all read the book of Samuel, how did Samuel come to, 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 to be used as a prophet of God? God called him. Samuel was a young prophet. God called him. So even if we don't have discernment, doesn't mean God will not speak to us. God will speak to us. But discernment is the tool that, that um, it's in our, on our part to say, you know what? Discernment allows me to acknowledge that it's God talking to me. Right? So that's how we're able to find out because Samuel was called out of his sleep. He would hear, Samuel, in the middle of the night, and Samuel would wake up like, hey, Eli, did you call me? Eli was a priest, right? Samuel was, was serving under, under the priest Eli. And Samuel, in the middle of the night, he would wake up because he felt somebody call his name, right? And it was God, but he didn't know it was God, right? So it happened once, twice, three times, and he said, Eli, did you call me? And Eli would tell him, I did not call you. And then the third time, when God called Samuel, that's when the priest Eli was like, that's, that's God calling you. That's God calling you. Like, you know, like, go with him. You know, like, let, like, let's see what he has to tell you. Because Eli had to determine. Eli was already an older priest. So he had the experience and the discernment to know, hey, that's God speaking. Samuel didn't know any better. He did not have discernment, but yet he heard God. So discernment doesn't mean that, you, that, uh, that God doesn't speak to you or not. It's our ability to perceive and, and acknowledge, God, this is you. This is you talking to us, right? So, second point, discernment is essential in the Christian walk. It's your ability to see and hear and understand spiritual things. It's not just understanding in the physical realm, but a deeper level of spiritual understanding. So discernment is, is a spiritual tool. Uh, discernment helps you acknowledge and divide between what is right and what is wrong. El discernimiento eh, es lo que nos ayuda Distinguir entre el bien y lo malo, entre lo santo y and in, between the holy and the profane, right? Discernment is, is the line that says on this side is a, is a holy and on the, yeah, on this side is a holy, on this side is a profane, right? That's, it's, it's a spiritual thing, right? So how do you get discernment? The Holy Spirit gives you discernment. When you ask him for it, the Holy Spirit is faithful and he will give you discernment. He will empower you. And he'll train you up in his ways. Proverbs said that his sermon, that he, Proverbs, Solomon is, is asking the Lord, or I don't know if it was the Psalms, but um, I don't know if it was Solomon or David that was asking God, God, build me in my discernment, meaning that it took time to build. It wasn't just like automatic. Although God can sometimes automatically give you the discernment, the ability to interpret between the right and the wrong, between what is the voice of God, what is not of God, what is God's will for my life. How do, how do you direct your paths? How do you know which path to take? Right? God will make it straight, but it's up to you to discern this is God straining in my path. Because God can make the path straight for you. And if we don't have discernment, we're not going to distinguish. We're going to be like, God, I'm so waiting for an answer. God's like, it's right there. It's right there. So it, our discernment is, is our ability to be able to say and, and, you know, and realize and acknowledge this God. This is what you want me to do. Because I have the discernment and I know your voice. I'm going to take the path which you have created, the path that which you have made straight. Right? So... Look, this is a very interesting thing about discernment, right? Uh, discernment is a supernatural ability, right? It's not natural. I can't explain it by natural means. If you tell a scientist or if you tell somebody that studies uh, the science, the physical science, they're not going to understand. They're even going to call you crazy. You'll be like, man, you're nuts, you know? But again, uh, discernment is a spiritual thing. It's a supernatural ability. Um, in the book of Job, chapter 6, verse 30, right, it says, is there injustice, is there injustice in my tongue? Cannot my taste discern the unsavory, right? This is very interesting, guys. Once you get deep, or not even when you get deep with God, God will give you moments. Sometimes when, you, when your discernment is kicking in, for example, like I said in the book of Job, somebody will say something, or, or for example, a business plan, right? Let's say you're going to go into a business with a partner and, and you know, in your spirit, you're like, ah, I don't know, man, like this feels a little sketch. This feels a little sus. Um, I'll just check in the mic. Um, and you're like, God, I, I don't know. I don't feel right about this, you know. Job said that when something was off, he had a bad taste in his tongue. But that was God saying, 
This is not good. This is no good. Do not, do not bite out of this fruit. This is not good for you. Right? So God will sometimes use our physical senses in order to, to say and direct the path and say, you know what? You're hearing something, or you might hear as in your sight. You might see something. Um, God will speak through your own thoughts. God will plant a thought and you'll be like, I don't know why I think of this person, I think of a, of a, of a serpent, or I think of this person, I think of like of a teddy bear because they're so lovable. For example, like that. That's just an example out of many. Right, but God will use your senses, and like right here, it says in the book of Job, taste. So it's very interactive, it's very real, guys. Uh, discernment is a supernatural, legit, legitimate ability. So, discernment is also the ability to interpret and weigh, in other words, judge spiritual things. So, many people think that, that judging just means like giving somebody a nasty face. No, <laughs> that's not what the Bible means when, you, when it means to judge. It's just that the human mind perceives it that way. Hey, they give me an ugly face. That guy is judging me or that girl is judging me. I don't know why. Judging means, in, in one sense, in the Word of God, means to weigh the things of God. It's, it's a scale, right? If, some, if you put something on a scale and you weigh it, that's why when you, look, when you think of like the court era, where you see like a symbol of the court, it's a scale. A judge means, in the biblical sense, to weigh, right? So you're weighing, this has weight to it. This has, you know, the weight of the Lord in it. And this does not. This feels completely empty. That's what it means to judge in one sense. Now, there's a way to say, hey, brother, you're in the wrong. You're in sin. God is calling you to repent. I still love you, but God is saying you have to turn away from your evil ways, right? That's another way. And we're allowed to do that sense in 1 Corinthians. Um, so that, that's what it is also to discern. You're able to judge and you're able to weigh things supernaturally and say, I don't know, like when I hear that song, it, might, it comes from a Christian artist, but for some reason, I don't know, I like, I, for example, right, somebody might listen to a Christian metal song or a Christian rock song, it's just an example, right, and then they go home and they feel paranoid, and you're like, God, but this has a Christian label to it, this has a Christian title, the Lord, the person that wrote it was, is a believer, a self-proclaimed believer, and you look into the person and it turns out that person is, is a little lukewarm, and, and for example, they might even be practicing occult stuff, satanic stuff, right, behind the scenes, but they have a Christian label, right, and this sermon will let you know, right, Proverbs says, love wisdom as a sister, right, uh, so wisdom is also a type of discernment, You're, the wisdom is the ability to apply the knowledge that you have, so, you know, it's, it's no point, for example, well, I know that some of us are car people, right, what good is it, if we know a lot about cars, but we can't practice it, it's no good, it's no good, it's like, I want a car to practice on, you know, so, it's the same, that's what wisdom is, the application of the knowledge that God gives us, supernatural knowledge. Um, not just physical knowledge, although there is wisdom that we apply in our everyday lives, right? Uh, as in following the Lord, right? But there's also supernatural wisdom that God gives us. Um, wisdom that, you know, the human eye cannot perceive or see. Uh, so, like I mentioned before, you judge things with discernment. That's why it's important. That way, you know, you're able to say, God, this is of you. God, this is not a view, right? Even if the person might be like, they might seem like they have good intentions, God, God sees everything. God sees it all. God uh, sees the, the entire picture, right? So it helps us discern between the holy and the profane. What is holy, what is pure, and what is not pure, right? So I don't have to elaborate on that. I'm pretty sure we all know what that means, right from wrong, between what's pure and, in, and impure, Right? Uh, without discernment, the lines are blurred, and you're not able to weigh, judge what is and what is not, right? If you cannot discern, you will fall into deception and allow yourself, okay, yeah. So another thing why we need to have discernment as, as a people of God, right, is because we got to discern, hey, this is you speaking, Lord, and when it's not speaking, right? Because that's extremely dangerous, guys. There's a lot of things out there that are preaching, uh, in fact, contrary gospels, contrary doctrines of like, I don't know, some people are even teaching witchcraft in the church and people don't discern it. They just say amen and I'm just like, that's evil. Some people are teaching astrology in the church, guys. Astrology. As in like how to, how to communicate with the stars. That's evil, dude. That's satanic, you know? And people cannot discern. That's why discernment is important. That way you're able to say, God, that is definitely not you speaking. And when you discern correctly, sometimes God says, run, run for your life. Uh, but that's wisdom, right? Wisdom will sometimes warn you, like it says in Proverbs. <clears throat> so, 
Discernment is also like a, well, it is a spiritual sense, right? Jesus would often say when he would preach, he would say, he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying, right? So the ears to hear is the discernment, you know? That's, what he would, that's why he would say, um, you know, in other words, he was saying, may they understand and decode the message that God is trying to convey. In other words, discern, right? People that, he, he would speak to the Pharisees and he would say, you're so blind, you can't even, dis you can discern the times as in like the physical weather, but you cannot discern the time, the spiritual times, the spiritual climate. I'm here. The one that you, wait, the one that you waited for has finally arrived. Because again, the people in the Old Testament, they were awaiting a Messiah that was like big and to liberate them from Rome. That's what they were expecting. Right? They weren't expecting somebody to pay for their sins. But when I read it, I'm, I'm going to go out a little bit on a tangent. When I read it, I'm like, well, how, how do they not like, perceive it? Because in the Old Testament, Exodus, Leviticus, it was all about sacrificing for the atonement of sins. Right? So it doesn't make any sense. Like, why would God send something that's completely irrelevant when you have this, you're, you're, every day you're sacrificing a lamb? It doesn't make any sense at all. Right? I went off on a tangent, but again, that was just pointing out that they couldn't discern. <laughs> they couldn't discern. They couldn't say, God, you're sending us your one and only son to pay for our sins, right? And God, Jesus called them out. And he said, you can discern the times, but you cannot discern the spiritual climate, right? It was a rebuke, right? Um, again, so just because something doesn't sit right with you doesn't mean that it's not of God. Sometimes, because uh, Proverbs also says, lean not on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. So take that into consideration, right? Uh, but anyway, if it's wisdom from God, it'll lead you to peace. It says here, so it's, if it's peaceful in your spirit, not your flesh, then you can, uh, you can be sure that God is making your path straight. So if you feel peace, you pray about it, you're like, God, should I go through with this job? Should I go through with this girl that I'm talking to? Should I go through with this uh, situation, whatever it is? And you're like, I feel peaceful about it, Lord. And I've already asked you about it. You've confirmed it in my spirit. I feel, I feel peaceful about it. It aligns with your word. You know, we're both equally yoked. It aligns with the word of God. Everything checks out. Go for it, man. You know, you prayed about it. You've taken it to the Lord. That's the first thing you should do always. You know, uh, anything that you have, always take it to the Holy Spirit first before you take it to anybody else. So, also when you discern, uh, you're also able to test the spirits. Uh, you know, it says in 1 John 4, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test every spirit to see if they come from God. So, discernment is the ability to test the spirits also because there's Antichrist spirits. I'm pretty sure we've heard of the Antichrist, right? The Antichrist is not just a person. The, anti the Antichrist is a spirit, right? The spirit of the Antichrist will say, do not live as Jesus did, you know, just believe. But the Bible says, even the demons believe and they tremble. So the Antichrist spirit will say, avoid the cross. Avoid the cross. I was listening actually to a, to a video last week and the guy in the video was saying, um, you know why the temptation of Jesus was to jump off the cliff? Because if the devil knew if he jumped off the cliff, Jesus would commit suicide and he would avoid the cross. He would avoid the cross, you know? So that's what the devil will do sometimes. He will give you the easy way out. He'll say, what's the easiest way to just, just get by? You know, just claim the Christian title, go to church, sing your hallelujahs, you're even religious. But I mean, if you don't carry a cross, that's all you are, a religious person, you know? Um, so that's, that's one thing that the devil will try to do, right? And we don't have discernment. The devil will sucker punch you. He's going to sucker punch you. And you're going to be like, whoa, where, where'd that hit come from, Right? When you discern, you see the devil coming from a mile away, you're like, that's Satan right there, you know? Or when you see, like, like you just, God will show you something, man. And when he shows you, our ability to discern is the ability to perceive and say, God, you're, you're warning me about this, so let me go ahead and let me, let me take the other way. Um, or just let me, let me just <laughs> not even participate in whatever it is that they're asking me to participate in, for example. Um, so discernment is the supernatural ability uh, to catch cues and signs from God that you would have missed in plain sight, right? Uh, like we mentioned before, you need discernment to discern the voice of Jesus. Without discernment, you're not, oh, without discernment, you're not even going to, like, perceive. <laughs> Again, like Samuel, God was talking to him, but he couldn't discern, so he couldn't, he couldn't say, who's talking to me, you know? He could, if, Samuel, if Eli had not pointed out the voice of God to Samuel, Samuel would have just passed it off in his own imagination. Guys, how many times has God spoken to us? And because our discernment is low, personally, I'm putting myself in this, guys. I'm pretty sure God has spoken to me so many times, but because my discernment level was low or non-existent, I missed it. And how many of us have missed the voice of God because our discernment was not there? 
It's essential, guys. If you want to walk with Jesus, the sermon is the tool. It is your spiritual eyes. It's how you're able to navigate and say, yes, no. That is Jesus. That is not Jesus. That is an imposter. That is a fake. That's a false, right? Um, so that's, that's why it's important, guys. So how do we get discernment? Like I mentioned, you know, you ask the Holy Spirit for it, uh, but you also find discernment by reading and applying the Word of God in our lives, all of us. You know, none of us are exempt. We all need discernment to walk with the Lord. It's crucial. It's essential. Uh, so the more time you spend with Jesus Christ, the more discernment you're to build up. Because the more time you spend with somebody that, that you truly love, Jesus in this case, right, the more you're going to get to know him. And the more you get to know him, the more you get to know his heart, his thoughts, just the way he is in general. Just the way Jesus is in general. And then from there, you're going to tell, you know what? This does not match up with you, Jesus. So I'm going to stay away from it, run away, put it aside, whatever. But I know this is not you, Jesus. This has happened to me many times, right? Um, just personal experience, right? So... Last thing, last thing. I kept it short, guys. But that was, that was the whole point in the message. Discernment, why it's important, why it's crucial, why we all need it. God is preparing every single one of you. Maybe not to, like, preach on the streets, but tell your neighbor. Just, just be useful, guys, in your areas. Just uh, tell somebody about Jesus. One soul, just one soul. The Bible says that one soul, heaven rejoices. The angels throw a party in heaven for one soul that repents and turns away from sin and turns to God. So God wants, you might already be working, guys, uh, Guys, but I feel like God is saying, get stronger. You know, like, get stronger in the faith. I want to push you out there more, you know. We might not preach in an altar. We might not preach in a pulpit, and that's okay, guys. Not everybody's meant for that, guys. Sometimes the preach, God acknowledges a preacher that's sincere outside of a pulpit more than somebody that preaches up there with a thousand, thousands of people. Sometimes those people that are preaching up there, heaven doesn't know them. Heaven doesn't, they're like, who are you? You just preach up there, but you don't, you don't love me. You don't even know who I am. You don't know my heart. You know, so I mean, don't, let's not get deceived, guys. The sermon will tell us something's off. You know what I mean? Not always, but God will give you those moments. And when you have those moments, you're like, wow. You know? Um, so even right now, guys, if you feel like your sermon is not there, that's okay. It doesn't mean that, you know, we're not close to God. It, it's just, it just means that we have to ask God, Lord, give me discernment. You know, sometimes I hear myself, I'm like, God, I don't, I don't see you. I don't feel you. Where are you? And I, I'm intentional about prayer. I'm intentional about fasting, about getting deeper with God, right? And I don't feel God all the time. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I, I would be lying to you if I told you that I felt God all the time. I'm not a walking hallelujah. I told God, I love you, Lord, and I'm living my life as a living sacrifice. I'm, I want to serve you with everything. Whatever it is, God, I want, I, want to, I want to say yes. Although sometimes I might be like, God, mm, you know, like, I don't, I don't feel like it. And God's like, you know, but I mean, even then, God is merciful. God is, God is graceful, right? Um, he's really good, guys. He's, he's really good to his children, right? Um, so that was the whole point of this sermon is just to grow like Jesus. You know, we want to become more like him, less of ourselves. You know, crucify the flesh. Leave the things of the world behind. That's, a, that's, that's what it comes down to. Discernment is just a tool, but the, the end, discernment is just a means, but the end is just becoming more like Christ. It's like saying, Lord Jesus, I don't want to live for myself anymore. What do I have to offer? I want, I want you to make, I want to make your name known. I want to establish your kingdom, the kingdom of God, right, in this world. And that, that's, that's, that's the whole bottom line of what we're here, guys. There's no greater purpose of, of the, other than just making him known. That's the whole point, guys. And um, well, that was it for today, guys. That was a message that God gave me. Um, if you all want to stand up on your feet, I'll...